whether it's a person or a company or a business. So there is no late or early time. You always have to be ready. And the readiness, obviously, to come to practical terms, you'll always have three kinds of plans will always have to be there. We're all studying. So you have a surprise test, you've got midterm tests, and you've got those final exams. Is there a difference? Surprise test, you always have to be ready for something that can happen right now, right? There's a midterm test which is not so important, which is not a milestone, but then there's a final test which is a milestone. So likewise, they always have for succession planning, if you read it academically also, you'll find them that there is a contingent plan, which is essentially meant for if something's going to happen to you right away or to a business right away. So this happened to say, if you recall in Japan, there was a huge uh, earthquake and tsunami four years ago, something, and suddenly the whole northern part was destroyed. All of those companies, you cannot plan for that. But then there's a contingent plan for the business for succession. <clears throat> That's always a contingent plan. If something were to happen overnight, you have it there. You should always be there at day one. The second is, which is more like a transition phase where you are basically grooming people and you have your functions which are delegated and coming in, which is, a, which is, a, which is an ongoing plan. And then you have a final takeover, takedown plan, which is difficult to anticipate when it's going to happen, but that's also a long process. So the earlier you start, the better. In fact, Tata's was an interesting story that I was hearing, but if you go back a little bit in time, and if you look up documents when Ratan Tata himself took over reins after GRD Jr., he was the one who brought in the age. He had to increase it later. And he brought in the age concept to basically oust the existing CEOs of different companies who were sitting on them like Hawk. Rusi Modi, a big stalwart for Tisco, Kerkar for Taj Mahal Hotels, and likewise, all the seven eight businesses. And little did they know then, then all of these businesses put together will be less than 15% of Tata in 20 years of time. 85% of Tata today is TCS, which they never intended to make it such a large company. So it is not always planned, but Tata's are now such a big name because of TCS, which was never in the large plan to begin with. So when that same thing, so that is why when you implement the, at the stage of founder's control, why I was hinting on that was, at the stage where you put in the founder's control parameters is actually when you determine your succession plan also automatically. So when Ratan Tata brought this in, a 65 years age concept, he actually brought in his own succession thing there and because when he'll also turn 65 at some day and then the whole game started because they did not realize that when he turned 65, he would not want to give up control like Rusi Modi or like Kerka. So, so essentially, your succession planning or let's not say planning, the impact of succession when it was going to happen actually is determined or starts getting determined at your birth. So if you are born in a particular, and when I say I'm, I'm using it a more philosophical term, not literally physically born, but when a business is taken up or when you create a founder's control, that's when the whole uh, structure of your business is created. So your, the, the business structure that you create at inception can suddenly not be given away at the time when you're planning succession. It's, 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 it's going to be there. Your gene pool of the business is not going to go away very easily. So it has to start from day one how you implement is dependent on your circumstances. Just one word only. One of the crude examples of this poor succession planning that is impact we have seen is in our own Ramayana. <laughs> Mandashrata wanted to give rain to his elder son and rightfully so. But because of one commitment to one of his wives <laughs> and the whole succession planning changed the game, rules of the game. <laughs> so that was a, just to add, very interesting. I thought I'll add. So this was an example of a negative commitment. I'll give you an opposite example of a positive commitment which also led to a bad situation. That's why I read a book. Don't, don't say yes when you want to say no. <laughs> so, so, so the Dashrat's uh, promise you saw the impact. Now see Bhishma's promise. He gave up founder's control. The Mahabharata is exactly opposite. So the first example when you see in mythology of giving up a founder's control 
if you see the promise which Bhishma made, he says, I will not have a successor. Mm. But that eventually, there are a lot of turns to it, is actually when he has a dialogue with himself, about what I said that you wouldn't have had Mahabharata if he had not given up that promise. So even, so the impact is very difficult to gauge when you're doing that act. How it will turn out in posterity is very different. So, so I just wanted to counterbalance even a positive, uh, this was a negative uh, thing that, that that should give in, but a positive thing which gave in also can lead to an equally disastrous result. <laughs> In Mahabharata, you are, there is a one point also, Mahabharata Bhishma was there. In third generation also, founder's control was there, even in silent way. You can see like this. <laughs> third generation, because usko Bhishma is the, Bhishma uh, ko let down karne ke liye. let down to word thik nahi rahega. Krishna ne jab Krishna se poochha gaya tha ki kaise hum Bhishma ke, Bhishma ko hum stop kar sakte hai, to unhone usko, unko jameen par, uh, Leta diya tha, so that he cannot make any decision yeah, any into, uh, into this uh, family. So, uh, uh, I know it's a very debatable topic. It's very, very difficult, as correctly said by Sangeeta ma'am and Vikas sir, it's very, very difficult for you to leave a company which you nurture right from your... Uh, right from your age at which you started your career, it's very, very much difficult for any founder to leave the control and give the control to a known person or to an unknown professional person. And at the some, t some time, we have to even realize that sometimes to the person to whom the control is given uh, reacts without, without any selfishness or react with selfish motive can definitely turn this succession plan into a disaster. What has actually happened in a lot of companies in the past, uh, professionally managed people were appointed, but due to their uh, selfish or unethical ways of doing the business sense, it has mitigated the founders, one again to step in into the shoes and to take the control again into their, into their hands. Uh, before we wind up, I would like uh, I will request the uh, audience and other dignitaries to please uh, to please ask some questions from the distinguished guest over here. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? No, uh, do you think that uh, this uh, issue that we have taken up, founders control and succession planning, it's the most critical one in corporate governance because we come across many issues, like one is CSR.